So native soils and potting soils are going to be very, very different, just like um, a mineral soil that's you know, rock-based or, or um, rock and mineral-based is going to be a lot different than a peat-based soil, like something that's organic rich, right? You are not going to grow things down in the Sacramento Delta that was a drained organic soil the same as you are you know, somewhere outside of that region because the properties are so different. So understanding CEC is really important, but with potting soil and horticulture, it's a little bit different, right? Because in, in, when you're growing in the ground, you're, you're relying on that soil to provide nutrients for you through its organic matter and through the fertilizers you've added. And typically, it's not as easy to just add a little bit more, do a little liquid feed, do a little top dress it as it is in more of a horticultural style system where you're in pots or raised beds. So you can take advantage of that potting soil and, and do that, dole out a little bit at a time. And like you guys were saying earlier, you know, looking at plants, seeing what they're doing, where are they yellowing, how are they yellowing, what's happening, and then looking at your soil test and being like, oh, well, I'm seeing this yellowing because I'm short in this, or I've got too much of that. You can be much, much more, I guess, direct in, in your feeding in a potting soil. And that's, that's why it was developed, right? Because you can get high yields in shorter turnarounds because you're not waiting for things to warm up the same, or you're not waiting for other processes in like a, a mineral soil that are going to be slower than in a potting soil. Mm -hmm. Interesting. So you're able to kind of, you know, directly target your nutrient provision in a lower CEC soil that maybe you didn't have, wouldn't have the capability of in a higher CE soil. If there's all of it stored, you don't have that same kind of, micromanagement yeah. ability like of the that. specific mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Of your nutrient management. Mm -hmm. well, Interesting point. You can still do that same sort of thing in a high CEC soil. It's just going to be a lot more forgiving than in that low CEC one. Like mm -hmm. you're going to have to, no matter what, dole things out. And sometimes that's not the most appropriate or the easiest or most economic way to do it. I mean, depending on what you're growing, cannabis or, or any other thing, like the height of the plant and the density of the planting causes problems with with that in in some cases okay but we don't really have that issue we've got the space usually right and um the like potting media was created f to be able to feed and drain and you know the hydroponic and the you know horticultural media was intended to drain and not hold on to a lot of stuff and then native mineral soils amended and this like super soil concept that people are talking about turning potty media into super soil is like, because eh? um, like your native mineral soil, building that up into a nice like high CEC, you know, forgiving buffered type of soil, that's kind of that the gift that keeps on giving, longer cycle, put your amendments in and, and let them break down over time with microbial activity. Um, so that's why we talk about blending the agriculture and horticultural mm -hmm. concept as you're taking something that's supposed to be, you know, uh, you know, a feed and drain and rinse out quickly concept with a soil building, you know, you know, concept. And then you're mixing them together. And then we're like, you know, trying to wrap our heads around what that means now, because like we understand potting media, organic versus native mineral and then what about when we mix them and people come into the lab and we try to gauge like well how much mineral soil is in this potting media well and then they'll tell us a story and we're like is it 80 20 is it 70 30 is it 50 50 is it you know what is it and they're like uh you know you have no I, idea i dug a trench right and, and then i put story. some of the original soil story. in there and then i added it to the full brim with the no you just don't it's a spectrum right so like you know people think of soil as like potting media native and like we're like no we're like a spectrum here in mm -hmm. humble it's like and like you bought mm -hmm. that potting media 20 years ago or last year well and then exactly right something and, that ties into what royal gold does is we wonder what media was that? Because 
if you're using a lot of the traditional soils or traditional soil building materials, these are all cellulose based products, yep. right? Mm -hmm. And so they're breaking down quickly into a smaller and smaller pieces and being digested by bacteria way more effectively where at Royal Gold, we're building out of like high lignin mm -hmm. organic matter. Right, exactly. Yeah. So it's going to last. In theory, Break it's going to last longer mm -hmm. and build fungus more effectively. So not only are you asking when did you put what in, but what was what you put in made of? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think the, you know, the chemistry or the actual, you know, structures of the whatever matrix we're growing in is super important, right? Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. There's such different chemistry going on with lignin versus cellulose materials. Absolutely, totally. There's such different chemistry happening between peat and cocoa. Um, there's such different chemistry happening between like mineral soils and um, organic based potting medias or whatever, like totally apples and oranges, right? And like structure, structure is another one that really, it interests me that we take these organic materials and we farm them and we call them super soils and we're building mm -hmm. structure and we're building all these things that like native soil inherently has structure. You know, they've got root systems and there are earthworms and, you know, aeration and movement of um, finer particles coming through. And there's all this stuff happening that affects the way water drains and how the structure you know, so it's not just the chemical properties of the soil that are so different between native and potting. It's also the physical structure <laughs> of like, we create all the structure by sticking, you know, whatever we're going to stick in there to aerate it, perlite or whatever, you know, well, and lava, this, pumice, whatever. Yeah. And in the same way that really nature is doing it, where you look at like the successional level of plants that are growing in an area and how that affects the soil biology and chemistry totally where you can have basically identical soil makings but then you have a historical meadowland that's all low su low successional plants and it's all you know bacteria driven soil yes. lots of weeds things like that and then it borders right into a forest land that has all of these lignin rich old growth mm -hmm. you know conifer contributing to the soil structure and you look at the biological diversity and how this, the nutrients move in these I, nearly identical, like you said, you can spit to a different soil structure. Where does that tie in as well to modern day soil building? Uh, I, have, I have something to say about that. So it's, First of all, it's interesting that like with agriculture, we're always destroying the soil structure by tilling up the soil, but we want to build soil structure because it's really important. Um, and then with potting media, it's an artificial structure, right? So we're like fluffing it. We're creating a fluffness, which is in lieu of an actual texture of a native mineral soil over geologic time has created mm -hmm. actual structure, right? So riddle me this. In order to develop structure in a potting media, you first have to destroy the structure that you built, which is the fluff, which compacts it. Then you add the biology, and then that ties the morsels together, which then creates structure, which then would be closer to a histosol, which is like you know more of your potting media that's been farmed and refarmed for 20, 30, 40 years. Now you're kind of making your own histosol structureful living soil. So super soils, um, I don't think is something that is created today and put in a bag and sold to people. Um, unless I might have a different definition of super soil, but no, I think I of, it as, of it as a, a developed over time, whether it's organic or not, it still has, it still has to take time. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to take geologic time. Because and we've that's got the other practices thing that, that, that speed this up, right? We've got composting and cover cropping and blah, blah, yeah. blah, blah, all these things. That and it, people it disempowers are doing. people too to say, you know, how many billions of years it takes to form one inch of topsoil or whatever. It's like, well, fuck, I'm never going to get that. Sorry, can I swear on this? Oh yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm never going to create an inch of topsoil in my entire, you know, however many generations. What's the point, right? And so we're destroying it at massive rates, but we can create it at massive rates too mm -hmm. because it's called human intervention. So if humans can intervene in a bad way and destroy stuff, 
we could also intervene in a good way and build stuff. Mm -hmm. So let's do that. That's amazing. And it's part of the whole com home composting movement. And Absolutely. You really see us starting to recognize mm -hmm. as a human culture that we can build life or we can destroy life with a lot of our choices. And the same comes to the world of cannabis where we're mm -hmm. looking to build life and in the world of soil building where we're looking to build life and we're trying to create a format when we formulated these soils and started looking at the science behind what we put in there was working and you know discovering why some of it worked we didn't maybe know all of it when we built these soils but wow all of these things contribute to building a structure long term yeah and in a world where we are losing topsoil to erosion mm -hmm. faster than it's being created, and there's you know actually soil endangerment and soil biology endangerment going on all over the planet, this is another way that I feel like cannabis tying to hemp and moving into big ag is going to hopefully benefit the world. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, with potting media, it's not, it's 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 always traditionally been meant to just feed the plant. It was never intended to be like a, a living thing. So when people started digging their trenches, like you just changed a lot of how things work, right? Because now you have this exactly. pretty inert medium. I mean, like it's it was organic, but it's not really doing much. It's just providing space for roots holding a little bit of water, holding a little bit of nutrient, like mm -hmm. it's... A planting media, right? Exactly. It's not soil. It's, it's not, not so soil. It's soilless media. Mm -hmm. But its properties but. give plants that jump start that they need. And so even though it's definitely not a traditional big ag sort of thing, the kind of idea of having those trenches makes a lot of sense, right? You've mm -hmm. got this potting media that stuff can get growing quick, but it's also coming in contact with the native mm -hmm. soil, which means that it's coming in contact with all of that biology. It's all moving mm -hmm. in and out and transferring nutrients from the organic matter that'll actually break down in the soil, right? Because whether it's grass or tree cover, it doesn't matter. That organic matter is turning over every year and feeding the microbes, feeding the plants. So having that potting media in contact with the native soil allows it to kind of be that gateway yeah. and allow that transfer between the two. 